Okay. So today we're going to make uh, just the face of a German Shepherd or an Alsatian. So have you seen a picture? Uh, do you, are you familiar with the dog? How it looks? Let me share the picture. Okay, so this, this looks like a German Shepherd, right? I have a feeling that this dog also, this is an illustration. Can you see? It's not a real dog. Or they've taken a real dog and made some digital brush strokes on it. But quite a nice illustration, digital. But we're using this only for reference. And then we have another one, which is, I think, a photograph. This is a side profile. So we could uh, we could draw the side profile today instead of this one. So what I want you to see is um, when we are drawing anything, what we need to look out for is basic shapes, right? Like what I explained to you last week. Now in this case, if you're going to draw the side profile of a dog, what you really see is a triangle. So you would see a triangle like this, maybe. Actually, is it a triangle? No, it's not a triangle. Then it's got a small snout and then it's got its mouth. So it's not really a triangle. This is also some kind of a polygon, right? So I want you to just observe. Don't draw anything. Don't draw anything. I just want you to see this. Now, the neck of the dog is going to be somewhere over here, which I will show you. This is the front of the dog. And then if you notice, the ears are triangles. So they go from here. Now, we do see all these shapes, but how do we draw them? So in each of these shapes, you see distance and angle. These are the two things that you will see. How long is one line? At what angle do we have to make it? And uh, with respect to the first line we draw, how long do we draw the next line? You get me? That's all we have to worry about. So when you see a line, like over here, you see that this line is almost straight, the one at the bottom. This line is almost straight, but the mouth is not like that. I will use that reference line to make a straight line only here. And then the mouth goes up here. See that angle? Now, how do you know what angle you, you have to draw the line? For that, does everyone know how to read a clock face? Do you know how a clock is? So let me let me show you what a clock looks like. So you have, when you draw a line, you would have, say, 12 o'clock here. This would be 6 o'clock. This would be 3 o'clock. Then 9 o'clock. And where would this line be pointing towards? 10 o'clock, right? So then you can decide which side the lines are pointing. Like, for example, the next line that we have from the horizontal, where is it pointing towards? It's almost like one o'clock. Do you get me? Because this is the most important thing. How long is the line and where it is pointing? And then you have this line parallel to this line, correct? So this is how we are going to draw the face of the dog. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to do the drawing and you have to just follow me. And then I think we should be able to get the line, uh, the dog's proportions right. So I'm going to draw a few more lines for, for us to know how the dog's face will look. So mostly what I do is I divide all my lines in half or one third or one quarter. So I'm going to divide this in half. And then from here, I'm going to draw a line to its mouth. So can you see it's almost like an inverted diamond shape that I create here. And then from above here, I'll draw a straight line. So this is at half point and I'm dropping the line straight down. 
and at half point, I get the I. Can you see this? So that's all you need to do to start seeing shapes. Now, I'm going to make a screenshot of this and I'm going to share it on the group so all of us can refer to this as we draw. Okay, do you have any questions? Feel free to ask questions if you're uh, unsure about what I'm saying. If, you're, if you don't get what I'm saying, then do let me know. Do you get it? Do you get the shapes? Okay, I'm going to assume that you do. Do you have any questions, anyone? No questions? Okay, shall we begin? Yeah, okay, let's begin drawing then. So I'm going to draw on the same page that we drew the earlier dog. Ma'am, I drew mine too big, uh, the earlier dog. So can I draw, uh, draw it in another page? Yes, draw it in another page. But the next one, don't draw it the whole page. Just draw it about a quarter of the page. Okay? Okay, now. First, I'm going to draw this in rough. And I want you to just follow my instructions. The first drawing is always usually the worst drawing. So use that to draw the picture in rough. And then once you know what mistakes you might be making, then you can make it in fair. Okay. So how do we start? Let us start with first making that horizontal line. Now my dog is going to be about this big. And if I make my horizontal line about this small, see how tiny it is? Then my dog's face would be about this big. This? Yes. Can I do it on the same page that I did the previous dog? Yes, I'm just make, doing rough work. Do you want to do your rough work on the same page? No. Yeah, so let's do the rough work first and then we will do it in fair. Okay, then from here you will draw a line going towards 10 o'clock. So see, this is 12, 9, 11, 10. Okay, so it's slightly sleeping. And then from here, it, the line goes to 1 o'clock. 12, 1, 2, 3. So in a rough drawing, you can draw all these markers, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 9 o'clock. That's why we make a rough illustration. Now, this line and this line has to be parallel. And they go almost the same distance up. So please follow my instructions. Don't make this line too long. See, it's just about half the size of the horizontal line. Okay, just about half the size. And this line is again, a little more than half the line. Are you getting these measurements? Okay, now I have drawn this line almost all the way up so that it's right, this point is right above this point. Then I'll break this in half. And from here, I'm going to draw a line coming to the corner. So I'm changing the measurements a little bit. So it's easier for us to, easier for you to draw. Now from here, we will draw a line going up to maybe 11 o'clock. And how big does this line have to be? Maybe about half, a little more than half this size, half of this, so about so much. And I don't have enough space. I'm just going to let it go outside the page. So you make a V shape here. Bring it a little lower than this point. And then we go and make the neck. 
is your is your shape looking more like a a little like the dog a, a dog any dog Alia, hold your book when you're drawing, please. Hold your book. Good. Now, from here, you can, from the top of the head, you'll draw a line that is slightly horizontal, then parallel to this line. See? Comes all the way to the middle and then joins over here. So this is going to be the head of the dog. And then the year is going to be from halfway up this line. Now, remember, whenever you have to draw anything at all, absolutely anything in the universe, you can draw everything with just lines and measurements and proportions, and that's all. This is exactly how you draw it. You can draw a face like that. You can draw a building like that. You can draw cars and vehicles or flowers and bugs and think of the most complicated thing that you need to draw and all of that can be drawn like this. Okay. Okay, now at any point if you feel you want me to slow down or you don't understand what I'm telling you, please ask a question. Ask me to slow down and I'll do it. All right. Shall we move on? Okay, now. We're going to put the eye of the dog somewhere over here. Remember how I told you? This line that we had drawn, we're going to cut it in half and draw one line coming down. And at half of this line is going to be the eye. Now, how do we draw the eye? You first start with a shape like that, which is just curved slightly to the right. So it's almost like a round shaped V. And then from the bottom, you get a line to come down like this. So it's not an oval shape. It's not really a teardrop shape, but it's just like a rounded V and then a horizontal line, but it's rounded. And then a little to the middle, we will draw a U shape. This is how a dog's eye looks. So let me just draw it separately over here. You draw like this and like that. And then you have, of course, the inner eye. And in a side face, not just dogs, even our eyes, you can see the inside of the eye a little bit. And then you have the, the pupil becoming rounded to the right will be a dark spot and this is how your eye will look and all this is also dark because the whole dog's eye is dark so it's going to be like this okay are you getting me And now we'll draw a snout over here. So that'll be like a triangular shape at the tip. And you can draw a teardrop shape over here. And then you will have the jaw. Or the snout. And the jowls. The jowls are the bottom jaw. That's it. And then because the dog has got whiskers, in three parallel lines, we will draw dots from where his whiskers will flow. But it's okay if you don't draw the whiskers also. The dots are good enough. They look nice.
Now, again, for this dog, we are going to make all our lines like this. They are going to be, uh, except for the ears, maybe. And everywhere else, the lines are going to be rounded. Now my dog looks like a lot different than your dogs. All right. So let's see how does your how do, how does your dog look? Aha. So let me just have a look and maybe I can give you some adjustments. What do you think? Oh, it is looking like a very nice dog. Hmm. No, no, it's looking like a nice dog. I think what's happened is that this angle that you've made, this one, this looks a little too straight up. But I think it's perfectly okay. This is fine. Remember though, when you're making a sketch, try to make your sketch with very light lines. Now I'm going to draw fur like this, like we drew for the last dog. And then uh, we are going to paint our fur in different colors, black, brown, and golden. Like this. Okay, now if you understand the shape of this dog, let's try making it again over here. This time I'm going to make Mom, it. Mom, can you wait one little bit? I'm not done with the rough one. Yes, 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 of course. I can wait. Let me give you the rough one. Let's take five minutes. Mom, can I start drawing my fur? Yes, of course. But now, Alia, remember when you're making the grid, make your lines very light. They should barely be visible. See, I'm, I'm going to make a line like that. Hold your pencil far away and then make a line like this. Yeah, very light. So ideally, you should be able to make the painting without having to uh, erase the lines. How about everyone else? How's everyone else doing? Do you want to go ahead and make your uh, dogs in pair? Myra, Leela, could you turn on your videos, please? Mom, I did the left drawing in another book. I, I, I put the left drawing book here. That's okay. doesn't matter. Just keep your video on. Okay. Yeah. Even if you do it in different books, that's fine. As long as you do it. But I like to see everyone's faces because then I can see how your posture is. Yeah, whether you're sitting properly or not. Whether your hair is coming in your face. Ma'am, can, Ma yes? can I show you? Yes, yes. Let's see. Oh my, that's very nice. How do you, do you like it? Do you like your dog? Yes, ma'am. I think it's wonderful. Very nice. Yeah. Well done. Now my dog is scratching the door to come in while we're drawing the dog. A real dog? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> it's okay. Let, let him or her in. It's okay. You can get a live reference then. That's always good. So cute. Look at him. That's Hi. adorable. Is it a him or a her? Hi. She is so cute. Look at that. <laughs> Let her be. Let her be. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. It's always nice to allow animals around you. If you have them, 
your pets are like your friends, huh? They they enjoy being around you when you're doing all sorts of stuff. So in my studio, I have cats. And my cats will come and sit around all my work. They will drink water from my water container. And I like it. I like to sit. Very often, they come and sit over here, right in front of me. Or sometimes on my work. So I have to wait. I, I remember... Drink the paint water. Wouldn't that poison them? I don't think so. The paint water is just some chemicals, but they are like, I don't think they drink so much that it's going to poison them. I remember once or twice when you were drawing and the cats came inside. Yeah, they love it. Fortunately, my cats don't have a problem with me making art. So they'll come and sit with me. Sometimes in these days when they're really cold, they'll come sit next to me. And that's very sweet. But uh, there are days, there are some, there's one of my students or two actually, whose cats don't like it when they are drawing. So the cat will come and sit right on top of the drawing and say, don't look at this. Don't pay attention to your drawing. Pay attention to me. I should be more important to you. So fortunately, my cats are not that. My dog sits on top of me and then she ignores me while being on top of me. Well, <laughs> that's a personality. <laughs> every every pet, every animal has got a personality. They all have different habits. Okay, shall we move on to the fair picture now? Okay, all right. So now let's again... Uh, Can I make this fair? Yeah, sure. If that has turned out good, you can make that fair also. I'm going to make my lines very lightly now. I'm going to make a box first. And I'm going to repeat those lines. But of course, now when you draw a second time round, you can change a few lines here or there and adjust your illustration so that it looks more accurate and more pleasing. So the rough illustration is only for us to understand how the lines work, where you have to make all the lines and so on. So this time round now, I'm going to make my dog's face starting from this, the nose and the snout. And then I'm making those lines at the bottom. But can you see my lines are also very light? And that's very important to have. Very... Mom, can you go a little slow still? Oh, I'm doing the same thing that we did before. But yes, but I still need like a little reference. No problem. Uh, you want to use this as a reference? Because now what I've done is, my dog is right behind over here. <laughs> no, mom, I still like need st steps to follow. Okay. So I started with the top part of the mouth, somewhere above the half in the box. And then I made the mouth and the horizontal line. And, you know, I'm making this looking at the picture of the dog. Now, I've shared this picture on the group, but I don't know if you have access to our WhatsApp group. But if not, you can just follow my lead. So here is the ear. That's like a triangle right on top. This is the face. And this is its snout. And this is its second ear. Mom, can you like show me how to make the ear again? Yes, the ear is just a triangular line, but it's rounded in the front. And then it's uh, rounded around like that. And then goes in an S shape like this. That's the ear in the front. And it's just got a lot of hair over here. So it'll all get covered up. It doesn't look so big and then eventually becomes the neck. And the hair on the other side, I think I can make One this. Minute. One minute. Uh, I can make it smaller, not so large. Uh, yes, Alia, you said something? I've drawn my fair. You've drawn your fair. Okay. Aha, very nice. Are you happy with it? You know, I'm thinking, Alia, do you want to adjust this part of your the dog's mouth? I think it might have become a little long. It's, so your dog might look a little bit like a boxer. 
but that's okay it's not wrong just that maybe you want to adjust that size okay okay now i'm adjusting the nose and the mouth uh anna are you with me yes mom okay now here is the mouth so i'm just going to make it like this and then the jowls and then the eye so the eye is over here you have this part then you have this part halfway and then half of this right and how do we draw this we draw that v shape I think my dog's nose is also become too long. So I'm going to adjust this, make it slightly shorter and thinner. So depending upon what breed of dog we are drawing, there are different kinds of, there are different proportions to the dog. So I think my line needs to be slightly higher here. And there's another part of the eye coming here. Maybe this is lower. And this part I think can go slightly slanting up. Now all these adjustments, if you want, you can make it, otherwise don't bother. Too many things happening at the bottom of the mouth. I'm going to change that. I'm going to erase a little bit. So whenever you feel you need to erase something, always remember, first draw the line that you think is correct. Because that you will draw with reference to the existing line. And then erase the lines that you don't want. So avoid erasing the whole drawing. That's that's not good at all. And some places where you're going to put dark colors, okay, if you don't erase also. And once you're happy with your illustration, just remove some of your guidelines. Um, I think I made mine too small. So can I just take that as one more up and do it one more time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Until you're satisfied, you can make as many as you want. Even after you've made one full fair one, you can change it. German Shepherd, right? Yes, this is a German Shepherd. Somebody said they, they have a German Shepherd. That's why I thought we were going to make this. Who has a German Shepherd? Okay, now, because our dog has a lot of dark lines, the I'm going to first paint the outside, the background in a blue color. I really like the combination of brown and blue. And the German Shepherd is brown and black, a deep black. So that combination should look nice, I think. So I'm making a very watery blue color. And don't worry, you don't need to rush. If you don't make the backdrop also, that's fine. Have but Luna you... started biting at your dog. Started biting at my dog? Yes. Why? I don't know. She's biting at it. 
you know what? It's a good thing. That means she sees that as a dog. Right? That means we must have drawn something correct. Great. So your dog has given us uh, an A plus in our dog illustration. I would take it as that. It's a great compliment. Because they would know better how dogs look. Isn't it? Now, when we are making a large backdrop, this is how we paint it, holding the book at a tilt. And then going back and forth like that. And you should load the brush with your color before it goes completely dry. And you can press the brush ever so slightly. Dog's name. Sorry? Leela's dog's name. Yeah, Leela, what's your dog's name? Luna. Leela and Luna? Oh my god, are yeah. you twins? My mom calls me Lula sometimes. Oh, I can I get that. And the two of you together are what, Luna? I don't know. <laughs> and our neighbor's name is Lena. Oh my god, Leela, Lena, and Luna. Wow. That is very confusing. Now you know, just need a Lolo, Lulu, and Lala. That's it. Complete. Everyone complete. All the last lures are done. Very nice. Luna is a very nice name. How are we doing, everyone? I'm waiting for those of you who want to finish drawing. And also, I'm waiting for my blue color to dry. Now, those of you who want to start painting, I'm going to share the picture, the reference image again. And do you want to try matching the colors yourselves and try to paint it? So you just have to see what area is colored in what color. Match the color, put it in that area, and that's it. There's really nothing to it. So the main body of the dog, I think, is a very light brown. And then he's got dark black patches around the face. So first I think we can paint the body in a light brown color and then over that we can paint the black. Man, instead of painting, can I uh, use uh, color pencils? Yes, absolutely. Color pencils are perfectly fine. Those of you who are using paint, I'm going to use this yellow ochre. But I'm going to use it very lightly. So I'm going to put lots of water, not lots of, ample water and just spread that color all over. So my whole dog, I'm going to first paint in this color, except the eye. There's a white part of the eye that I'm not going to paint, the reflection. Now, usually when artists paint in watercolor, uh, you need to leave some sections unpainted, like the sections where you have reflection. And then 
There are some pair sections which are dark, like over here. Now look at how I'm going to do this part. I want you to just see it. You don't have to do it like that. Where my paint is slightly wet around the nose. I'm taking a blue-gray color and I'm going to paint that section dark while the earlier color is still wet. So this makes the mouth look like it's really a dog's mouth. But you don't have to do it like that. You can just paint afterwards also. That's fine. But I just wanted to show you how this is done. This is called wet on wet painting. And a lot of times when you do paint like this, it helps in merging colors and mixing them with each other. So at this stage, it is looking as if something's wrong with my dog. But it'll be perfect. It doesn't look like a dog's mouth. What does it look like then? A zombie dog. It looks like somebody has put something on his face. That's true. It does look a little bit like zombie dog. But as we complete it, you'll see how magically my zombie dog turns into a dog. Into a dog dog. Into a dog dog, yes. A real life dog dog. See, this is how. I'm so not really confident if I can do that. So can I like just keep it with the yellow ochre? Keep it yellow ochre. And then you can, on top of the yellow ochre, after it has dried, you can make a black snout. Or even first start with a dark brown snout. Don't put black directly. Now I'm going to add more black. And this time around, I'm going to use a lighter brush and spread it out like that. So this might be easier for those of you who have color pencils. You can make this in color pencil. It'll be a lot easier. Now I'm going to also paint the nose. But I'm going to leave a little patch. I'm not starting to look like an actual dog. Who, mine or yours? Mine, uh, yours. Okay, okay. It is, no? See, it's magical. There's, there's so many things that... As they change, things start looking different. That's why a lot of times if you're painting something and you you feel that your picture is ruined halfway through, you just look at it and say, oh, no, I made a big mistake. Now what do I do? Uh, we should just continue. The painting fixes itself. And always remember that a painting will look different from a photograph. Always. That is how it should be. Every time you make a painting, it will look different from your earlier painting. And it will look different from the photograph from which you're making the painting. Otherwise, what's your point? If you're not going to make it different from the reference image, then you are not an artist. Then you will be a printer. Ma'am, can you show me the real photo we are copying? Yes, let me show you the real photo.
I'm lying, starting to look like a dog as well. Areva, very good. I'm a done dark brown highlights instead of black. Okay, that's also fine. That's fine. Mom, can I show you my drawing? Yes, please. Oh, nice. Very good. Very nice, Myra. Very good. Thank you, Mom. So, I'm going to tell you why I think something is good. Because it's not enough me just telling you it's good. You should know. So, what I'm looking at when you're making these pictures are, um, one is, are you getting the right shape of the dog? And many of you have got, all of you, in fact, have got the right shape for the dog. Um, I mean, definitely, it's not looking like a table, right? It's got four lines, but it could easily have looked like a table, but it's not. Then uh, you've got the, the positions of the eye, the snout, all of that very close and looks more like a dog than anything else. So these are the parameters. These are called parameters. Whenever you are trying to evaluate whether your drawing is good or you need to make some differences, uh, changes in it, you need to evaluate it based on some parameters. Otherwise, how will you know whether you're on the right track or not? So these are parameters by which you judge and you can tell yourself, okay, this looks like I'm on the right track. This looks like I need to put in some more work, so on and so forth. All right, always remember that. And I'm happy to divulge what I consider the parameters and what I feel you're doing right. So don't be afraid to ask me ever, why do you say it's looking good? Can you tell me so then I can watch out? It's very important to be your own evaluator. All right? Okay, now I'm making... A Mom, I finished the yellow coat and it looks like my dog has mustard on it. Oh, ho. Oh. So maybe the Alsatians uh, already themselves look like they have mustard on it. Mine also looks like it's got mustard on it. See? I'm not making a German Shepherd in the same way I had written with Sean Felice last time. Okay. Have you written it already? Yes. No, I'm going to. Okay. Right, right. Okay, now every time I have to add a darker color, I'm adding it as a wet color on a previously wet color like that. That's the only way I think I can make it look very organic. But for many of you, if you want to try doing this in pencil. I'm doing it so I can show you one technique. And remember that in order to learn this technique, I have messed up a lot of drawings before. So, so don't feel bad if in trying the wet on wet technique, sometimes your pictures become a little too wet or the dog starts looking more like a devil, devil dog or something like that. That can happen. And we have to do that in school and everyone's pages just store. Oh my god. You tried making doing a wet on wet? Yeah, we had to do it and then everyone's pages ripped because the page was too thin. Oh yeah, that is true. Huh? You have to have or you have to take um you have to be very careful how much paint you use. Then it's fine. The teacher's page also ripped. Oh, really? Oh, no. Oh, that's unfortunate. Was that part of the class? How to rip your page with paper? That could be a learning then. That is true. So I believe whenever there is something that you want to do, but something else happens, uh, it's always a learning moment. There's never, 
never anything that happens that you can't learn from. Yes. Oh my God, let's see. That is looking nice. Wait, wait, keep it up, keep it up. So your German Shepherd's nose needs to become a little blacker, I think. What do you think? I think that will then bring the focus up to the nose. But just wait till the rest of your painting has dried up. And remember to make this, see how my, my dog's nose is slightly grayer than the rest. Rest of its snout. And I'm making this teardrop shape for its nostril. If you can make that, make it or just make that part dark. Now I'm going to make its eye. Now it should look more like a dog. So I personally think I'm very good at making these eyes because I've spent a lot of time in practicing how to paint just the eye. Human eyes, dog eyes, snake eyes, uh, lizard eyes, crocodile eyes. Who else has got eyes? Uh, no. No, monkeys. Monkeys, yeah, monkeys eyes. I've done chimpanzee eyes, cat's eyes. Each of those eyes are different. So I really enjoy making eyes because I've uh, practiced a lot. Now see, I'm going to finish this eye off, but I'm going to leave a little bit. Now off. my page is super duper done. Super duper done? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Wait for wait for all of us to finish. Auntie, what has to please? That's so cute. Who's that talking? Is that Luna talking? No, ma'am. It was me talking. It was you talking. Oh my gosh. Okay, now here I'm going to write German Shepherd. Now, do you remember how we wrote this? First, we will write. Uh, first, we will measure the space and see how much space we've got. G E R M A N. And then Shepherd, always write the word in rough. It's S-H-E-P-A-R-D. So, shepherd has got one extra letter than German. S H E E H E R D. Two letters actually, I missed calculated. I better. So see what I do after I make my one layer, I can keep making more and more layers because the color dries up and becomes much lighter. And I, I quite like my dog. It's not looking exactly like my photograph, but I like that it's looking very much like a German Shepherd. So remember when you're making art, it needs to look slightly different from human, I mean, real life, isn't it? Oh, 
Ma'am, I tried shading with pencil colors. Let's see how it's looking. Okay, very nice. So, just look at the picture of the dog. I'm going to share it one more time. There is a little bit of dark around the eye. See this? Oh, sorry. So, there's a little dark around the eye. Right now, you have made it nice and dark around its mouth. That's perfect. Now, how about making it a little dark around the eye, a little on the top of the head? Okay, do you want to do that? Okay. Uh, Leela, are you painting? Uh, can you sit at a desk and paint if possible? Ma'am, uh, the other computer is in my room, but the battery died and this one takes up the entire desk. Oh, ooh, okay. So anyway, what I'm going to suggest to you is like you're keeping the um, your book. I'm, I'm just going to show you one minute. So if you don't have too much space, the only amount of space you need is to keep your paint. So don't hold your paint, hold your book. So if you, on your table, you've got just enough space to keep your paint box and your water. Keep that. That doesn't take too much space. And hold your book. So you can sit in your chair in front of your uh, computer. Hold your book in your hand and paint like this. Rather than keeping your book on your bed and water and all, because then you're bending forward. Sometimes the water can fall on your work because it's on unstable ground. So bring that onto the table. Any table is fine. And always hold your book on your lap or in your hands and paint because you need that stability. Okay. And also remember that... Uh, if you can get a smaller book, right now your book I think is in A3 size. We don't really usually need an A3 size. It's an A3 size is for I I don't know who, maybe professional artists. I don't use A3 size for our class. So the next one that you buy, if you bought this, use this up. And the next one you buy, you can buy an A4 size. An A4 is smaller than an A3. Oh, this has 200 pages. <laughs> So I think you should just go ahead and buy a smaller book. I'll find one. I think I have some. Okay. You don't need such a large size. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Alia, are you done? Okay. Do you want to leave? Any suggestions for what you want to do next week? Can we do a shizu next week? Oh, we still want to do dogs. Is there any other topic we can do? Now you should be able to do all the dogs that you want. Now, I think after two dogs, you should be able to make more dogs yourself, right? What do you think? I think it should be fine. We don't. I don't have to show you all dogs. I, how many breeds are there? There must be like a hundred breeds. So you can pick your breeds and draw them. Is there anything else we can do? We can do planets. Planets? We have we have done planets twice. I think let me check if we've done planets and oh there we go. Imaginary planet. We've done imaginary Ma BTS ka logo. Sorry? Ma'am a BTS background and logo. What is BPS? Ma'am, it's a K yes, It's a K pop B B T Ma can we not do BTS. <laughs> Mom, can we please not do that? Oh my God, why? Why is it so bad, BTS? Mom, it's a simple logo. Okay, let, let me just have a look at what is BTS. It's a band. Yeah, but is the picture nice? Because you may not like it's the band. Simple. But uh, the band, I mean, the logo, drawing the logo could, could be an interesting challenge. Okay. It looks good. Like you can draw with the rulers. Oh, okay. Any other thing that we can draw then? Mom, why don't you decide? I'll decide? Okay, fine. I'll decide. Mom, you had a list of things people wanted to draw. I do. What do I have? Oh, 
Okay, somebody wanted to draw Cleopatra. Do we want to draw Cleopatra? Ma'am, um, uh, we wanted to do that. In the seven o'clock batch? Yeah. Okay. Um, then there was on monuments. Do you know of any monuments you want to make? We've already done the Colosseum, right? Yeah, we've done the Colosseum and we've done other stuff also. All right. What else can we do? And can we do a statue? A statue. We can make a statue. What statue do you would you like to make? Do you know? There's a of funny me? statue in my history book of Mohenjo-daro or something like that. Mohenjo-daro is that? Is it the the lady? No, it's from lady. in this valley. It's some priest king person. Oh, it's a fat guy with a beard. My statue looks different. Okay, let me see. Mohenjo-daro. Uh, priest in, the, in this valley. Uh, statue. Or be a statuette. Yeah, it's a fat guy. I knew this. Yeah, I only have the head in my book. So. I think there is only the head in every in the world. <laughs> the the rest of the I'll show you which one it is. Let me let's see if we can do that. Is this the guy? Yeah, it's this. It's quite a handsome statue. Shall we make something? Can we have this in our books as well. So this is a great topic, really, because then we could make a page on Mohanjadaru. We could make the the priest king's uh, face or the statue. And we could also maybe um, write a little bit or draw a little bit about uh, ancient culture. Or something like that. Sam, so can I keep this book and keep a full big page for that? No, don't ever make a big painting, because I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. So with all of this, please. Because, no, no. In your case, you would still need only half the page. Okay. You can need the full page at all. For full page, you might be able to make like eight illustrations. Hmm. Okay, any oh, are like sugar skulls. I've like searched them. Can we like try to make them? Uh yeah, we made sugar skulls last year around Halloween. But we can make them again. Show sure, my um, a spooky. A spooky uh, sugar skull. And the thou those which we made, they were super spooky. Wow. We should make this. So I'll tell you what, I have a video of the sugar skulls. This is the grown-ups class, but I'll share that with you. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. Uh, we've just done it last month, but we could do some spooky stuff. So I'm going to write these down. We can do sugar skulls again. We can make a Mohanjadaru statue. Okay, now what else is... Yes. Can I show my drawing? Yes, yes. Let me see it, Avantika. Oh, look at that. It's excellent. I love it. Are you going to color the background as well? You should color. Uh, okay, ma'am. I'll color the background. And it looks nice and complete. Well done. Okay, then what are the festivals coming up? Do you know when... Bali. Diwali is a way away. First, we'll get, have Janmashtami, then we'll have Rakhi, or maybe Ganesh Chaturthi. Ganesh Chaturthi is there. We can make a some Independence Day. Independence Day is also there. That's true. So, what can we I make? It's coming in August. Uh, Independence Day. Sorry. Yes, yes. So, we can think about what to make for Independence Day. And uh, usually we should think about what is happening later in the month. Then we can make artwork for that uh, maybe two or three weeks ahead of time. So think about it. We already have Mohanjadaro statue for next week. We'll do that. What is next week? 17th and 24th. Yeah. 
we're going to have class on all days. And this month, I have a feeling, no, we don't have extra class. No, we have perfect only four classes. All right. Okay. Okay, so please share your pictures on the group. I'm going to share my Alsatian, my German Shepherd's picture on the group also. So you can have a look at it closely. And I'd like to see your pictures also. Okay. Ma'am, what's the spelling of German Shepherd? The spelling is G-E-R-M-A-N. That's German. And Shepherd is S-H-E-P-H-E. E R D. So the word is the person who herds sheep. So it's sheep herd, but we can't call him sheep herd, sheep herd. So it became shepherd. So it's S H E P H E R D. It's all one word. Mom, may I leave? Yes, those who have finished can leave. I shall see you next week. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Bye.